Well, thank you everyone for joining us today for the MIFOS Initiatives webinar as part of the Financial Inclusion Week 2017. My name is Edward Cable. I'm the president and CEO of the MIFOS Initiative. And joining me today will be a couple members of our ecosystem, Eduardo Licona from Gentera and Nayan Ambali from Rupai. So I've been guiding our global open source community for the past 10 years. And today I'm going to show you the journey we've been on in pioneering open banking solutions, the journey the members of our ecosystem have traveled on, and how you can join us on the journey to open innovation. The MIFOS Initiative is an award-winning, nonprofit, free and open source software project dedicated to ending poverty one line of code at a time. More than 300 institutions across five continents reach more than 7 million clients through our software solutions. Openness is all the rage these days. The financial inclusion sector and the formal financial sector are now starting to embrace open banking and open APIs. While the industry is finally starting to talk about it, we've been actually doing it for years now, and not just open APIs, but fully open platforms. The depth of our partner community and the breadth of innovation catalyzed through our ecosystem proves it. We were delighted to see the recent Moja Loop announcement. This open payments platform launched by Gate Foundation will perfectly complement the MIFO stack, and it is only through these open approaches that we collectively can achieve our mission. Next, I'm going to briefly chronicle how we've built innovative platforms to help the industry through three stages of evolution and how our open technology is transforming financial inclusion. The industry as a whole has gone through three distinct transformations. In its first generation, microfinance, as pioneered by Dr. Muhammad Yunus, captivated the world with Grameen-style joint liability group lending. Recognizing that access to credit wasn't the only key to poverty alleviation, the industry pushed forth financial inclusion and the widespread access to the full range of financial services. And now, with the ubiquity of mobile phones, the connectivity of the cloud, and the power of big data, digital financial services are transforming financial inclusion. For the past decade, at each stage of the journey, MIFOS has been a pioneer at the forefront of new innovation for poverty alleviation. In 2006, as a project of the Grameen Foundation, we launched our Generation 1 software, MIFOS 2, as the world's first open source, web-based, management information system for Grameen style joint liability group microfinance. In 2011, we spun MIFOS out as a separate nonprofit initiative and launched our generation two software, MIFOS X, the world's first truly open API driven platform for financial inclusion. And now in 2017, the MIFOS initiative as a project of the Apache Software Foundation is launching our Generation 3 software, MIFOS IO, powered by Apache Finrac CN. It's the world's first digital financial services platform built on top of an open source, cloud native application framework for digital financial services. This current generation we're entering is the most exciting transition of all. A total transformation of all banking technology has begun. I'm going to show you how our ecosystem has been building open innovation and how we're fueling a locomotive to deliver new innovation on top of the digital rails. I want to put the generations of MIFOS technology into context for you to because to understand where we are going, it is so important to understand where we have come from. Generation one, as I said before, was a project of the Grameen Foundation's tech center. It's most likely the MIFOS you first came to know. It was an MIS solution for Grameen style joint liability group lending. The project began with MFIs in India. Our first MIFOS user, Grameen Kuta, used the MIFOS software to scale from 25,000 clients all the way up to a million clients. MIFOS 2 was also deployed at several other large institutions, including BTPN in Indonesia and Endan Al Majmua in the MENA region. With these early successes in demonstrating the viability of an open source software for microfinance, 
Mifos became an independent nonprofit company and set out to grow its global community. Paul Moritz became our chairman, and I, along with Craig Chellis, took the helm to launch Mifos X, our Generation 2 solution. Generation 2 we called Mifos X. It's a complete core banking system for financial institutions of any size to manage their head offices, their branches, and their field operations. With Mifos X, we had two main goals. First, we wanted to provide the entire industry a core banking platform that horizontally scaled across all forms of financial inclusion. And secondly, we wanted to make this platform extensible enough to enable a partner community to sustainably support open source software and to build brand new solutions on top of the platform itself. Since the first production ready release became available in 2013, we've been delighted with the progress we've been able to achieve on both of these goals. On the first goal, the platform is now being used by organizations of all sizes and methodologies across the world. MFIs, credit unions, SACOs, savings groups, asset financing companies, Islamic microfinance providers, rural banks, peer-to-peer -peer financing providers, you name it, they all use Mifos X. And we've also been able to grow an expansive partner community who both provide support for the open source distributions and build their own solutions on top of the platform itself. One of our gold partners is Missoni Services. And companies like Missoni and Conflux Technologies have built their own cloud-based systems, reaching hundreds of institutions across Africa and Asia. While some may not know this, the award-winning Missoni system stack is powered by the Mifos X platform and APIs. Missoni has built its own streamlined UI, mobile apps, and extended functionalities for its own customer base. All across the world, we've seen other partners provide robust core banking systems powered by Mifos X like Musoni. Conflux has done the same with Finflux in India, IDT Labs is doing so for West Africa, and recently we've even had a bank in Germany migrate its loan portfolio onto Mifos X. Most exciting though, is what we've seen over the past year, as our ecosystem has begun to use the platform to build new innovation that goes beyond traditional brick and mortar financial services, starting with mobile wallets to digital credit to machine learning on up. In Latin America, we have partners using machine learning and big data to better manage credit risks. And we have digital credit startups across Africa and Asia using Mifos as a core banking platform connected to their data analytics engines. In India, we've had a FinTech startup build out a consumer and agent facing mobile wallet solution that's powered by Mifos. And it's all this new innovation on the digital front that has prompted our next evolution. These innovators and members of our ecosystem have told us loud and clear that they need and what they must have is a platform upon which they can deliver faster and more affordable innovation, a platform that provides them with infrastructure that continues to scale and frees up significant time and money so they can stay market oriented and consumer focused. All of this can help the smallest of teams deliver the biggest of ideas. As we make our transition to generation three, now let us look to the present and to the future. As I said before, a total transformation of all banking technology has begun. And this transformation is occurring at all levels, technology, business solution, and leadership. And the fault line in this tran transformation is between standalone and closed versus connected and open. Now let's take a look at each level of the transformation. Technology. The old technology, and regrettably, the current technology for most of us out there, is the technology of standalone isolation, high costs, and limited reach. Based on our knowledge and experience over the last decade, the time has come to create a new technology to create a cloud native microservice oriented framework to build digital financial services. Containerized microservices running in dynamically managed environments will facilitate the support and deployment of agile innovations that provide the scale and modularity that our ecosystem has been requesting. These digital financial services platforms powered by this new architecture are not simply cloud-hosted core banking systems. They are a complete transformation in technology. They are cloud-native, 
whereby the cloud is the operating system and business services are directly embedded in the cloud and are massively scalable and easily adaptable. They're also based on global standards, which are open source and drive shared innovation. And lastly, they're delivered as a service. They're readily accessible to be directly used by businesses, have low operational costs, and provide a single point of contact for digital transactions and mobile apps. We, the MIFOS Initiative, are leading this transformation. Our architecture has been transformed, our solution has been transformed, and our community has been transformed. I'm going to show you the impact later on this will have on both financial inclusion providers as well as fintech serving the sector. For, my, for financial inclusion providers and MFIs, these digital financial services platforms aren't just business service platforms, but rather business innovation platforms. With these new digital financial service platforms, we remove the headache and stress of costly investment in new fintech solutions so you can focus on service delivery and innovation on the platform. You don't need to spend 80% of your time and money buying, building, maintaining, and upgrading banking systems, but rather focus on customers by configuring innovative products and services that are connected to digital payment and transaction systems and that are delivered via mobile apps. For fintechs and banks looking at our Generation 3 architecture, It'll provide the ability to leverage a fully open banking framework and you can build apps and not infrastructure. You can be freed up from costly, cumbersome legacy infrastructure and can build on top of a state-of-the-art architecture with the modularity, scalability, and extensibility that banking requires today. You can innovate more efficiently and effectively by reusing common functionality and focusing development efforts on where it really matters most improving the user experience for your customers, delivering value-added services for your region, and responding in an agile way to incoming customer demands. You can also unlock new business value by opening up APIs, adopting plug-and-play approaches to new innovation, and enabling platform-based marketplaces and ecosystems. So now that you've seen the journey we've been on, I'm gonna pass it over to Eduardo, who's gonna document firsthand the experience he's had as an innovator in our ecosystem. And then next after him, Nyan's gonna share his personal experiences being a part of our ecosystem. And then I'll conclude our webinar later on by looking at how we enable open innovation and a brief showcase of some of the technology stack you have available to build your innovations. So just one moment as I pass the controls over to Eduardo. Hey, let me tell you that it's just very exciting to see all the, the history behind Mikos because it's 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 really a long a long set of accomplishments that, that you have already made. So uh, in order to be quick, because uh, I want to be very concise, um, let me just start uh, telling you a little bit about myself. No? I work for Philnet, and I will explain in the in the next uh, in, the, in the next slide what internal is. Uh, I studied uh, information systems, so my background is technological. But I, I wanted to tell you that I started business in order for me to 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 be honest with myself, because usually the technology is is, is almost never the problem. It's it's almost always related to the business processes how technology enables these businesses process, business processes that uh, allows you to be successful in the market. So uh, that, that's one of my views in, of the world that uh, uh, usually in the past there, there were like silos where technology did not speak to, to the business and now we require for them to be completely integrated. You know? uh, then uh, my background is mostly in banking and consumer banking and to work for, for another bank and then I started on microfinance and I'm really passionate about it because you can really uh, see how can you help people really develop and, and enable new ways of life for them you know uh, I've been working, been working mostly on new product design in loans and payments you know? so that's kind of my expertise what I do in, in Finland uh, it's enable new business models 
and, and we we do everything that everything else is currently doing you know the same thinking in the startup in order to be in close contact with the with the with the customer in order to create new business models so and my role here is uh, whenever anyone has an idea of a new business model and uh, they have it, they have tested it with the customers and they have seen that it's going to be successful and and I'm responsible for enabling it so it, it was quite a challenge for me at the beginning because uh, I had to to fight with all the the current IT infrastructure that we have in in such a large organization such as the one that I work for so I will t be telling you about that how could we overcome these challenges of uh, confronting a very large IT organization uh, what can try is can try is um, uh, a group of uh, of five companies with 25 years of existence the, the main company is Compartamos, which is a microfinance, started as a microfinance institution. We are currently a bank and we are currently serving over 3 million customers. We have 1.7 billion US dollars in, in our loans uh, portfolio. So I, I believe we are one of the largest, one of the largest uh, microfinance institution in Latin America. Uh, we have Intermax, which is Orbitas' company with uh, over 4.4 million remittances per year. You know, that's quite big here in Mexico, especially for our customers who are on the bottom of the pyramid. Uh, they, they are continuously receiving money, from, especially from the United States. No? So it's a very important part of the land. Uh, then we have the ASTAS, which is a financial correspondent network. So we enroll merchants in order to provide financial services in very far away uh, communities. So in order for us to reach them, it, it was impossible for us to build branches in, in those uh, faraway places. So we we created our own financial correspondent network with over 2,700 merchants. And we uh, transact every every year around 5.7 million transactions. We have an insurance company in order to provide insurance to the same customers. We currently have 5 million active insurances. Um, we sell them along mostly with our loans in order to protect them in any eventuality uh, to protect the customers, especially life and, uh, and medical expenses. Uh, and then there's FinLab, uh, the Financial Inclusion Lab devoted to create new business models. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we have been very successful, successful in the previous 25 years, but we're um, mostly doing the same things that we were doing 25 years ago. So uh, it, it was important for us to be able to change the business model because what we really know is that no matter what you do, uh, when you are successful, you attract competition uh, in any market. And certainly that has been the case. There are now hundreds of, of microfinance institutions that were not there 25 years ago. So we need to evolve and be able to, to continue to lead the market. And that's why we created FinLab in order to discover these new business models and be able to scale them up to the, to the organization. Because when you have been really sustainable, we have, in, a, in our opinion, we have been really successful. So when you have all your, your company thinking that you have been successful, then there, you don't see the need for change because you think that you, you have been successful doing what you do, then why, why change? No? So it's really hard for, you, for a company to change and, and, and recognize then even though in the past you have been successful, it doesn't mean that in the future you will continue to be so if you don't change. So we have, you are facing a very specific problem, the problem of, of changing when all the people in the company think that we are really successful and we shouldn't. So it's been quite a, quite a journey here and a very transformative journey, not, not only for me, but also for the, for the company. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about that journey that we've been through. Um, this is a, a, a very large diagram of what we did. Um, you know, we have been 25 years doing the same things. And what we have seen is that, it, that, that our customers are changing. Now, we have uh, various segments of the population currently as our clients. So we have very young people and we have very old people. So we have people who are very eager to adopt new technologies and people who are just afraid of them. So what we said is, it, it, we are just not going to wait for everyone to want this solution. We will focus on our uh, first market, our beachhead, beachhead market. 
where we can really focus on creating a differentiation that in the future will will be the solution for most of our customers, even though right now it's 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 only a part of them. So one of our one of the biggest pains that we have right now in the group loans methodology, because that's our largest product, the John Liability loans. The main problem that we have is that the people just don't want to meet every week. Uh, so what they uh, what they do is usually skip the, the meetings and do things like that, but we lose control of them. Well, not control of them, but control of the payments. We don't know who paid, who didn't, and things like that. So what we did is uh, try to create a digitized experience for this customer in, in which they wouldn't be required to meet physically, but they would uh, do the payments in other channels and then uh, uh, just uh, generate a digital meeting where they in a chat, they could all communicate and, and tell each other, I have already made the payment, I have not yet made the, the payment. And they can see with complete transparency what, that, what, what, what is happening. And if in an eventuality there is a need to, to, to create, to do another payment, a consolidated payment, I mean, when someone pays, other, one, other people from the group need to pay for them, no? So whenever this ha happens, they can do it through the app, charging the, the, the payment to their accounts. So they don't need to be physically there. So that's, that's our first challenge. In order to digitize our customers, focus on one segment, and then make a complete digitized experience of the current uh, of the group loans that they currently have. So what we can do through the app is secure and group, group loan meetings and payments. So what we have is a list of our customers when they can see who paid and who didn't, and then pay. And they can also acquire products, specifically insurance. Right now, uh, we have a, a, around three or four types of insurance, which are related to life insurance, and it's a medical expenses insurance, and there are individual insurance and family insurance. And so they can actually select which kind of, 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 uh, of insurance they want to have. And they can also start all the group and select the members. So they, they, they can have a complete digital experience. And then uh, they can also communicate to each other through the chat. Now, what I want to say in this point is that it, it never mind that the complete uh, experience is digitized, we have not let go of the, the, the sales staff. They, they still have promoters related to, to, the, to the people that are, that are um, using the group loans. This is because uh, sometimes they require uh, a better service, no? So the, the promoter is also in the chat and whenever they need any assistance or have any questions related to the products or need anything else, uh, the, the promoter can assist them. And also, whenever, it, whenever it's a, a new group, the promoter goes to the meetings and, and ensures that everyone is um, ensures that everyone is uh, uh, knows each other. Because in order for the group loans to work, each of the members must know each other so that they can ensure that they have the will to pay and the capacity to pay. So, in this first phase there's always the participation of the promoter. And as we advance, the promoter is able to, to, to service more groups and we move ahead in, in, the, in the, whenever you have more cycles within, with us, then the promoter can step back a little bit because it's, it's just not adding any more value, no? So uh, what we have here is the app that connects through an API into Mythos and into the switch for SAP. Why do we do that? Because we're, uh, we're having, having it in two ways. Uh, Mifos handles the loans and ACP handles the accounts. So we need to make, uh, whenever we make a payment, we make a transaction on the ACP to withdraw the money from the customer's account. And then we reflect the payment into Mifos. So we need an, an, an API layer orchestrating everything else, aside from the already present API layer within Mifos. We have these very long planning cycles. Uh, so in order to innovate, we wanted to use Lean Startup and Design Thinking and e do iterations with the product. But what was happening is that ACP with these uh, long processes in order to plan has had very long development cycles. So in order for us to, to really get into the market any new functionality, 
it takes us over a year. So that's obviously not compatible with uh, an iteration process. It's, so we needed to look for another solution in order to shorten these development cycles. So what we did was uh, we find out uh, about Mythos and what we were doing is uh, Scrum and we have agile equipment and we have multi-function teams where we have people from business, we have, have people from operation and we have people, people also from IT. And uh, we were able to shorten these development cycles to, we were uh, releasing new functionalities each week. So each week we have releases. So it was really uh, a complete difference to be working with Mythos than with what we were doing with SAP. That's because Mythos is really very, very flexible. And not only that, because it has uh, such a strong API that we were able to do many things faster than we could do them in, on SAP. The other thing that we have is as, as SAP and, and this large IT organization have so many priorities because they have around 200 projects or so uh, in the in the coup, then we needed to, to, to jump this, all these priorities. So what we did is with this new core banking that's apart from the current core banking, then we're all able to handle everything. So we were free, completely free to do whatever we we needed or the process or the agile scrum wanted to do. So it was faster, it was more flexible, and we didn't have to deal with too many priorities. Also with SAP, any change that we made uh, had impact on many satellite models. So whenever we made a change, we needed to test it with a lot of people. So not even if we were able to do the, the, the developments really fast, we wouldn't be able to get them out in the market because we needed to do a lot of testing around. So it was really hard for us to, to move on. With Mythos, as it's a, a very flexible um, a very flexible platform, we were able to, to release and, and, and do tests really, really fast because uh, we were doing changes not, not uh, directly, in many cases, not directly on Mythos, but on the other layer of the API, which we couldn't do it in, in SAP because our current architecture was not uh, strong enough. No? Uh, and also there was this issue that we have uh, almost 3 million customers uh, now working on, on the current infrastructure. So uh, we, in order for us to test and do all the releases, it was really dangerous for us to use SAP to do the releases. So that's why it was also a very good idea to use Mythos. And there was also too many security requirements whenever we made any new functionality because we were handling all the information from the 3 million customers. So when we moved on to Mythos, we only used information of those customers and we were using the, the, the Mythos solution. And we were migrating people from SAP to Mythos uh, in order to, 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 to be able to advance faster. So, the, the result, and I'm really going, going to go back, the result is that uh, the most important part of this is that the customer, the customers did, uh, did receive the application uh, very well because it, it freed up time for them and it was very flexible. It was a lot more transparency. So everyone was really glad about it. Thank you. So uh, the other thing that, I, um, just to, to sum it up, why open platforms? Uh, standard development languages uh, over lower development costs. I, I believe that's kind of always clear because what we have with SAP is that as it's not a standard language, it, it needs to, to have some special education. It's really hard for us to find consultants and developers for that. And so when you find them, you, you actually need to, to, to steal them from other organization. And right now with the Mythos community, it, was, it has been really easy for us to find new resources and it, was, it has been very flexible. So the, 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 the fact that it's a standard, the interfaces are standard and the languages in which it is developed is standard. Uh, it, it, it frees you up from having to depend on any specific resource. The next part is public communication standard, the APIs, the APIs on REST or, or SOAP is required because it was really easy for us to change anything. So it was, uh, and also as, as it was a redevelopment of the standard, it was really easy for us to communicate with the with, with Mythos. 
And also, it was really amazing to see that the data model behind MIFOS was so simple and easy to use that it, it, it would enable us to, to create reports very fast and to be able to extract information with really almost no explanation from anyone. So it, it is really easy to use. The, the, the simplicity of the data model is just amazing. When we compare it to what we have in our other core, uh, really it's, it's just almost impossible to to understand the, the data model behind the other core because it's just really complex, really, really complex. So uh, I really, really think that's amazing for innovation to be able to, to have a database uh, model in such a clever and clear way. Uh, also, it's also very hard for us when you have, need to do A-B testing, do, sometimes it's really hard to create many instances. And, and now in Wimitos, you can create many instances to test different versions of everything. And it's really fast to create them and really easy and you don't have this licensing cost. This is, and there's also the possibility to increase our tether product with, without having to pay a fee for that, no? Because usually there's, there are some other products that you need to, to pay in order to be able to, to enter the code. And the open communication regarding possibilities and limitations of the platform within open forums. What I mean by that is you enter into the MIFOS community and you can enter into the forums and see whatever is being developed, what's actually there, what is not there. So it's really clear for everyone. Sometimes when you purchase software, uh, the vendor usually tries to say that, that the, the platform does everything and there's absolutely nothing that they don't do. But with this, it's also very clear because all the community is there to tell the truth, to tell you what is possible to do and what it's not possible to do at the moment. So it, it's, it's really good. It's been really good for me to, to from the from the start, to know what was MIFOS was capable of doing and what not, because it allowed me to do better projections of what we would do on our first phases. That and also there's the ease of implementation of our casino contracts, no place regarding the purchase of software. Usually when we when you actually try to purchase software, there's also a lot, a lot of bureaucracy ahead of being able to use the software. You, know, you need to do a lot of contracts, you need to do a lot of bureaucracy. And with this, you can just start to do it. And, and, and really, as there's such a large community, you can really get your hands on very good development staff uh, at any time you need it. And um, then, uh, the next part, uh, quality innovations were implemented. Well, when I told you the new Android application sales service for loans, which includes enrollment, administration, payments, and cross sale, the automatic collection to the accounts, which we didn't have on, on SAP, and chat with the groups, which allows you to send files and receive files and everything. So we wanted to replace the WhatsApp that they are currently doing using. What sort of technology enrollment? Yeah, what we think is first the digitization of our current models. I mean, what we do on paper, do it digitally, then open innovation, interact with more startups through the APIs, and then uh, try to exchange values through through platform. So that's kind of our raw uh, roadmap, and, and we will certainly uh, use uh, MIFOS in order to be able to do this open innovation, taking advantage that there's already an API and it's uh, available to everyone. But uh, what the advantage that I give the startup, the, the startups is that I'm at the district bank and then I can uh, really um, collect deposits you know, and they can't, so I can enable me business models for it and I can learn from the startups using Mythos by providing them with administration services for the loans, which is always very expensive and also very hard. Uh, there's also, and, and finally, platform building for value changes that we need, when, once we do open innovation, we need to be able to, to be the connector between all these startups and the customer because we need that the, really the financial services will be on the back for, for not in the front, but in the back of any of the, the business of the future. Uh, and this is my last one. Any platform should be done within a correct architecture. What I mean by that is that we don't have uh, the right architecture in our current core, and we, we are changing that right now, but uh, that enables the different layers with different logic on that, at each layer now. So in MIFOS, we should only or mostly have the administration of the products. The business logic should, should go in other layers so ahead so that you will be more flexible. Uh, open platforms are best when used within their current scope. What I mean is that usually 
you shouldn't adapt them to do things that they were not intended to. And the, the, the advantage with Bifos is that it's a very complete platform. Uh, if you have turned up a platform, these modifications are only as good as the team you gather. What I mean by that is that it completely depends on the consultants that you, that you have. Uh, hopefully, uh, for us, it has been a very good experience because we have had a very good team. So the, all the modifications that we made were really made very fast and very effective way. But uh, it, it certainly is something to take into account to, to review the team that you're going to use. Um, and also the, 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 the enormous advantage that Mifos gives us is that we were able to do, to, to do continuous delivery for functionality because it, it already had all the APIs and, and it was really easy to connect. And, uh, and the other advice is if you have many open platforms and you can select the one with, with, the, with the easier data model because it really enables you to, to understand it fast and be able to advance not into the problems of the technology, but into the problems of the business, which is really what drives everything. Uh, and the last part, I did it um, a bit fast. It, it, um, I, I think I ran out of time, didn't I? Uh, no, that was great. I think you covered everything and the time was perfect, Eduardo. So I'm going to pass it over to Nayan. Uh, if anybody has any questions for Eduardo, please hold them to the end and you can type them in the chat right now. But I'm going to have Nayan uh, give his presentation and then we'll have questions at the end. So thank you, Eduardo. That was really impactful to hear your your words thank you and we can see your screen Nyan, and you should be unmuted so yeah uh, thank you uh, hello everyone uh, my name is Nyan. i'm one of the co-founder at uh, rupai Rupa is a self-service urban microfinance. We offer micro loans to semi-skilled workers and small business owners entire, entirely on a mobile platform. So what, is the, what are the problems we're trying to solve? Uh, at present, uh, in India, half of the adult population doesn't have access to formal banking especially when it comes to accessing credits. So what are the major problems? Uh, coming, coming back to the uh, points, like what are the like, larger pain points? The banks are like, unable to underwrite small and micro loans at a viable cost. So that is the problem number one. And if you, if customer walk into the, the current traditional microfinance, it is complex and uh, like, time consuming, especially in urban areas, the customers end up losing two to three days of their earnings. Informal lenders may be very convenient and quick, but they're, they're as expensive as like no, no 100% per annum. So, how is solving problem? Uh, we have built an uh, alternative uh, underwriting where we generate a rupee trust score based on mobile data and like based on a psychometric uh, q and a. since we, we opted a delivery channel as a mobile customer can apply apply for a loan using mobile anywhere anytime so it is convenient and since we use a machine aided uh, decisions so we're always on and as customer uses rupai more and if customer is repaying on time for the uh, for the next deal we always like no uh, give a uh, we reduce the interest rate and we unlock a larger loan at a flexible terms so how do you do it like how do you provide uh, uh, the entire credit facility on the mobile the customer downloads uh, rupai app we do a aadhar based ekyc post that using location history we do a customer's house verification as well as work location verification automatically post that Based on the customer profile and the loan purpose, the system uh, decides a set of questions, a psychometric questions, to understand the intent and character of the character, characteristic of the customer. So, post that we do a credit bureau inquiry. So, once we get all this data, then we generate a cash flow analysis. So, using all this information, we generate a rupee trust score. So, once customer is qualified using India's tech components, you know, we do a 
paperless and cashless uh, transactions and the loan is directly disbursed to customer's bank account uh, it can we move to the next slide uh, as i mentioned uh, earlier like uh, half of the adults doesn't have access to uh, the uh, access to credit from the formal financial institutes but if you look at through rupai like they are completely by bypassing the traditional banking and they are directly like you know uh, getting the digital financial services through rupai uh, at present we are operating in uh, bangalore uh, on an average uh, daily basis we are uh, uh, getting around 60 loan loan applications and uh, uh, average we are uh, at present we are dispersing up to 10 loans on a daily basis do we opt for mifos if you ask this question to ourselves like whenever you are standing on like you know as a human being whenever we, we ourselves standing on any platform the first uh, the first question comes from, you know what is the stability of the platform like you know how uh, like can i trust it the same question arises when uh, we wanted to like you know build our rupees core uh, um, offerings on on a platform then when we we evaluated a couple of the platform then we opted for mifos for the main reason is it is, it is stable it is secure it is scalable and it is trusted by more than few hundred uh, financial institutes so that is the reason like you no know, that is one of the main reason why we opted to build our solution on top of mifos one is that we almost saved uh, a year development time to like you know reinvent the wheel because already mifos is uh, giving out of box uh, the ledger management the portfolio management the customer management and the uh, analytics part so that it is not only just time apart from the time we saved a cost also uh, with mifos the major advantage is that uh, we are able to save almost uh, about a uh, year of a time development time it is not just the time uh, along with that it was a huge uh, a cost saving and since like no uh, uh, out of box mifos are providing all the loan management and then ledger management and the analytics part uh, and uh, customer management uh, uh, solution so we are able to focus on building the the core ips of uh, uh, rupai so that is how we are able to leverage uh, the mifos platform a uh, rupai team consists of myself nayan and then uh, one of my uh, another co-founder is ramesh Uh, Ramesh has. Uh, uh, I'll just give a quick background of Ramesh. Uh, Ramesh started his uh, career with uh, Komli Media, uh, where he was like uh, into um, uh, gathering uh, uh, digital foot uh, digital footprint analysis and all, and he worked on a big data. And then uh, Dhirendra is uh, my technical co-founder. Again, he worked with uh, a company like Komli Media and uh, Yardley, and then even he was part of CA. Uh, he is also a part of building a financial system for uh, some of the larger bank our advisory team consists of uh, samish shetty who is a director at uh, chaitanya microfinance that is one of the india's uh, uh, fastest growing uh, microfinance and they are completely focused uh, uh, it is a rural india focused microfinance and it is also uh, assisting us yeah uh, thank you very much Okay. Well, thank you both, uh, Nayan, and thank you, Eduardo. I'm going to continue with our webinar, and then I'll speed through my slides so we have a little bit of time at the end. So now that you've seen and heard firsthand from a few of the innovators across our community, I want to give you a brief glimpse into how we at the Mifos Initiative help uh, enable open innovation. While open technology itself is essential to how we fuel these innovations, our open approach is much more holistic and much more comprehensive than just technology alone, and it cuts across multiple dimensions. First off, we have a widespread global community that's open to participation from any stakeholder. Secondly, we're driving open standards to help guide and accelerate innovation, and then we also build out and cultivate an ecosystem to identify, create and catalyze new innovations and lastly we have a collaborative model and infrastructure to enable <clears throat> knowledge sharing across the globe so our community isn't just made up of software developers it also consists of the hundreds of financial institutions and users that share their requirements and support 
their fellow community members. It consists of our network of more than 120 partners. These are organizations like Conflux who build solutions on the platform and tons of grassroots organizations who take our open source distribution and provide support and hosting. It also includes corporate partners like Google, Walmart, VMware, LinkedIn, who provide volunteers and other support to help build new innovations. We're also beginning to add more larger vendors like ThoughtWorks, Accenture, who are identifying ways to build on top of the platform. And then it's not just technical coders who are contributing to the software itself. We work with a number of skilled volunteers across many sectors, and they're assisting with duties like product management, uh, business strategy, market research, helping us with financial compliance. And we also work wide, in a wide fashion with students and interns around the world through programs like Google Summer and Google Coden. So really, our global community touches many different cultures, many different skill sets, and it's only through this collective approach that we're able to achieve the vision and grow the platform and help to fuel innovation. And second, I wanted to focus on standards. So open source is not free. Million dollars are in fact spent on open source. What really matters about open source is that is the open standards. The real purpose of open source is to develop standards that drive the delivery of services at a massive scale, whether these be electricity, transportation, communication, or in our case, financial inclusion. Software companies, industry groups, and regulators collaborate on open source projects to develop and enhance these global standards. Global standards help to drive deployment at scale, and these standards are how innovations become widespread, accessible, everyday realities. I'm gonna go through a couple you know, quick case studies on how open standards are established. And as many of you know, we recently became and graduated to a top level project in the Apache Software Foundation. And this is an incredible milestone for us and essential to what we wanna do around establishing an open standard for digital financial service innovation. Big data, as you know, is transforming many different fields from medicine to agriculture to transportation. And soon it's going to transform financial inclusion and many of our partners are already working with machine learning and artificial intelligence to better manage risk and offer new loans to consumers. Hadoop is an open source framework for storing and processing very large data sets. Originally, it was proposed in a white paper by Google and then was launched by Yahoo. And it's now become the standard that underlies the use of big data and has a number of large corporate partners that drive it forward. Just as Hadoop did for big data, we want to do the same for financial inclusion and digital financial services innovation. An open standard for us is essential to our growth and innovation that we need to achieve universal financial inclusion, and we want to follow this same path as Hadoop. As you can see, the original concept, as we talked about before, for MIFOS was launched by the Grameen Foundation. We then launched the first version of the product and then brought to market the second generation through the MIFOS initiative. And now we've brought the software under the governance of the Apache Software Foundation, and we're seeking to establish that as an open standard and build out new partners like Quailab and continue to grow partners like Conflux and Masoni to help further establish that standard. So for us, standards are key, a key factor in helping to drive and accelerate the pace of innovation. A third factor for us in helping to unlock these open innovations through members of our ecosystem is to take our global community, unite them on our open technology stack, continue this push towards open standards, and then focus on creating ecosystem to enable adoption of these new innovations and also an enabling environment to both identify and create new innovations. The MIFOS initiative acts as the hub in the middle, guiding everyone. We capture and coordinate user requirements from our user base of hundreds of financial institutions. We curate these into requirements that partners can take on. And then we equip partners with the tools to build these solutions and then provide the tools to help distribute these solutions and bring them to market. And once this innovation is then shared, it's widespread across our ecosystem and replicates across the globe. And then lastly, I wanna focus on the collaboration aspect of how we enable widespread innovation. It's not just the technology itself that is shared, open and collective maintained. It's also 
the innovation, as well as the ideas that get shared across our global community. And it's this power of the collective mind that supports, collaborates, and shares knowledge that is one of the key factors of our community. Just the other day, on our mailing list, I was able to connect one of our partners in Hungary with a partner in Guatemala so that the partner in Hungary could demonstrate a loan enhancement that the partner in Guatemala had requested and needed for one of their customers. To enable this collaboration, we maintain communications infrastructure, such as mailing lists that you typically see in open source projects, and we have chat rooms on Gitter, Slack, IRC, question and answer forums. And then for documentation, we have extensive online wikis, video tutorials, and how-to guides to help others self-support themselves. And then on the collaboration front, all of our source code is hosted on GitHub, and we use JIRA and GitHub for issue tracking, feature requests, and general project management. And as we set forward with getting Generation 3 launched, we're bringing forth new efforts and partnerships with tech accelerators to build out innovation labs so we can cultivate and build out new innovative digital financial services on the ground. We also try and work closely with our local communities by establishing uh, networks of local chapters to enable face-to-face -face collaboration happening. And we also host webinars like we're doing right now, as well as in-person events regionally and across the globe. And so now that you've seen a bit about our ecosystem and you can understand the comprehensive openness of our approach outside of technology itself, I want to look at the technology and the stack we provide. We provide these open source building blocks, or as James puts it, starting dough to help innovators, large or small, create brand new solutions. Any of these open source applications that I'm going to highlight could be used out of the box as a production ready solution, or they can serve as the foundation for others to innovate from. First off, we have our platform. We have both our Apache Interact platform that both Nyan and Eduardo have been innovating on, and then we have our soon to be released generation three application framework that both provide an extensible backend that's fully exposed through APIs. And this solution is not just an open source core platform, but we like to think of it as a DNA of financial services that can be put together in many different expressions. We also include a web app, which provides the user interface, workflows, and business processes for a bank, core banking system for any brick or mortar financial institution. And then likewise, we provide a mobile field operations app to enable direct outreach in the field. And then more recently, we've launched a suite of consumer facing mobile and web apps. So you can easily provide an omni-channel experience to help go directly to your consumers through mobile and online banking apps, as well as mobile wallets. Apache Finteract, or what we call Mifos X before, our generation two software is our core. It's a completely open source core banking platform that's fully accessible via RESTful APIs that are documented in the Swagger open API format. It's a backend that's been used to power brick and mortar institutions through core banking systems provided by Musoni Services, Complex Technologies, IDT Labs, and many other partners around the world. It's also the financial services engine that our community has been using to power the digital innovations you saw on the map before. Innovations like mobile wallets, digital credit, and they do this by leveraging the services for customer management, account management, portfolio management, ledger management, and more. Generation three, which we touched on earlier, is on its way and will be formally released soon. It's a culmination of all the knowledge and domain expertise we've gained over the past decade and putting that into a modern cloud native microservices architecture to provide not only a digital financial services platform for widespread adoption amongst financial institutions, but also an application framework for rapid innovation amongst fintech companies and partners looking to support the industry. This first release will soon be available, but in the meantime, you can check out the microservices on GitHub or explore the demo server that I'll send out in the follow-up notes from our webinar. As I noted before, we provide the Mifos X web app. It's a clean, simple, AngularJS web app that provides an out-of-the-box core banking product for financial institutions or for partners looking to build a solution 
it's a reference application that you can extend further. And we have a demo server of this that I can share links to as well, or you could easily download the, the product or I can sign you up for a trial instance. And then on the mobile side, we provide an Android client that's native Android with material design to enable mobile field operations. It allows field staff to do all their operations out in the field. They can onboard new clients, take client photos. They can handle new loan applications. They can track the location of a field officer, pinpoint the location of their clients, manage all their collections in the field. And version 3.0 of this is available on Google Play right now. And version 4.0 will be shipping soon. As we look towards consumer-facing apps, we're going to be soon be shipping version two of our mobile banking app, Mifos Mobile. This enables any financial institution to offer their customer a mobile app and a branchless banking experience. Clients can download and self-register for the app. They can then view their accounts, view account statements, and even apply for new loans. They can also make transfers between their accounts transfers to third parties, and simply add new beneficiaries by scanning QR codes. It's also ready to be integrated with additional mobile money providers to enable more third-party transfers. And there's also automated and campaign-based notifications that the staff of the financial institution can send to their app. So we look forward to having more of our community download this and use it as a starting point to enable branchless banking a branded experience for mobile banking. Likewise, uh, just as we have a mobile banking app, we've provided a online banking app that's built on AngularJS to allow a similar feature set uh, to customers who want to have the form factor of a browser and a richer user experience. So I will also share links to where this can be downloaded. It's soon to be released, and then we have a server of that where you could test out functionalities as well. And then we've also built out the wallet framework recently, just as we've done with generation three and providing a completely open backend through this digital financial service application framework. We wanted to do the same on the front end by providing a modular framework in which to build smart and user interfaces on top of our backend. Following the Android clean architecture approach, shall have a lightweight mobile framework leveraging Apache Finiract. And the framework was built out according to the level one project mobile wallet requirements. So the core components are now in place to support both merchant and consumer facing wallets. And although this is just in its early stages, the community has already built out two proof of concept applications, including an omni-channel payment solution for Indian merchants that leverages the UPI in the India stack there. So those are the applications and frameworks that are available as part of our open technology stack that I wanted to, to showcase today. In terms of how you can take action and what you can do next, as I stated earlier, you know we encourage partners in our community who are looking to innovate more rapidly to explore the Generation 3 framework on both the GitHub repository as well as the documentation on our wiki. For any of the current Mifos Generation 2 solutions, you could download the source code or download the product and begin deploying those. We welcome partners to begin building apps or deploying the platform itself. And then for those that don't want to get as hands-on with the code or the software itself, you can download some white papers that we have on digital financial services and Financial Inclusion 2.0 that have been provided by Mifos and our recent spin-out, Quailapp. You can also apply to become a Mifos partner if you're not already a member of our community and ecosystem. If you're interested in learning more about our solutions, we can set up a call to discuss them further. And we look forward to members of our community or new members coming to us for the first time to begin promoting digital financial services platforms in your region and you could even join or start up a local chapter. And if you're looking to volunteer or provide your skills, we're always looking for volunteers or advisors. So I think we have about 10 minutes for questions now. So I wanna open the floor to questions from anybody. They can be questions directed towards me, 
Eduardo or Nayan. So uh, please, you know, either raise your hand or type a question in the, the chat as I don't want to unmute everybody right now as it might get a little noisy. But if you have a question, please type it in the chat or raise your hand and then I'll unmute you so you can speak to it. So. Uh, and so Siva had a question regarding when is the mobile, I think you're talking about the mobile banking app. So the mobile banking app, we're looking to release that hopefully within the next week. We're just cutting a point release of the Apache Finerac platform that has the additional self-service APIs that are needed for the mobile banking app. And then we have a teeny bit of QA to, to wrap up and then that'll be available on the Google Play Store. And then the online banking app, probably will be out within the next month or so. It's not quite as far as long as a mobile banking app, but that's the timeline for the, the mobile banking app. And then Victor had a question around uh, generation three, and is it ready to do any kind of proof of concept? So generation three, you know, as I said earlier, we're in the process of formally moving that into Apache. And then once it's in Apache, we'll cut the first official release. But our partner, Quaylap, you know, has been building out the first product on that for one of their uh, customers. And that product, first version of the product is reaching stability very soon. And so you can test out the functionalities that are there on the, the, demo, the demo server, which I'll send out in the follow-up emails. So I think, Victor, based on, you know, what your needs are, it could be ready for proof of concept. It really just depends what uh, feature set you need to support. But the framework itself and the microservices that are in place are relatively stable right now. And we do have you know, a strong baseline of functionality in place, which primarily centers around the needs of credit unions. And then Jose had a question around a demo or proof of concept of the mobile banking app. So yes, uh, Jose, you could either download the APK, which we can send around, or we do have uh, we do have some online videos of that. So I'll send you links on that as well. And then Alagi had a question around the relationship between Mifos and Quailap. So Quailap is simply a partner of the Mifos initiative, just as Indrasoft or Conflux or Musoni is a partner of ours, so is Quailab. So the majority of the Quailab team uh, were formerly staff members of Mifos, but now they're an independent organization and they are setting the stage for being a lighthouse partner, uh, building out digital financial services platforms on top of generation three and setting the model for other partners in the market to do the same. And then Siva had a question regarding main additional features in generation three. So really, you know, at this point, Siva, the main, there's not too many main additional features in generation three. It'll take a bit of time before generation three is really at parity with generation two. But really, you know, the breakthroughs are at the architectural level and what is enable around scale, extensibility, and modularity. And at a functional level, you know, we have made the ledger much more flexible. So a lot of the pain points some uh, partners have seen in building out and modifying the loans module should hopefully be addressed there. But as we you know, develop additional microservices and get more functionality into generation three, uh, many partners will see the benefits, not just in terms of scalability, but the ability to pick and choose and plug and play the components that they need to, to use. So that was a quick answer on that. And we can share more on that, Siva. And then Agung had a question regarding documentation on the microservices in generation three. So it's a good question. And we are starting to have documentation in place on there. It's on the Apache Finneract wiki under Finneract CN. So we're calling, once once it's in Apache, it's going to be called Finneract CN or Finneract Cloud Native. And Merle, along with some of the other members of the Quailab team, have spent time documenting the microservices at a high level. But within the MIFOS initiative, you know, we're work working with our volunteers to get more documentation in place. And also, you know, Isaac on our team, he's also going to be doing more of the documentation around generation three that will be community facing. 
but stay tuned for more documentation on Generation 3, especially as we move forward in the process of getting it into the Apache Finrac community. And then Alagi also had a question around how one can get technical assistance in deploying Mifos X. So as I stated earlier, uh, we have a widespread network of local partners. Our goal is to try and have a local partner in every, so based on where you are, you can check it online through the documentation and video tutorials that we, we have there. I think I caught up on the questions in the chat right now. So if anybody still has additional questions, we have about five more minutes and I will, you know, make sure we send out uh, the recordings from the, the webinar. I think given there were some technical difficulties throughout, I'll probably chunk up the webinar into smaller pieces so we don't have the technical difficulties included. And then I'll also make sure, as long as uh, Eduardo and Nayan are fine with it, to share links to the presentations. And then I'll also compile you know, some of the links that I mentioned before regarding uh, accessing you know, some, of the, some of the parts of our open technology stack. So. Uh, let me just unmute both Eduardo and Nyan to see if they have any closing remarks and if anybody has questions for them. So. Uh, Eduardo, did you have any closing points you'd like to, to share? You're still on mute, Eduardo. Okay, no, I see that you're okay. Yeah, well, once again, you know, first off, I want to thank everybody for attending today. And I do want to especially thank Eduardo and Nyan for sharing their experiences being innovators in our system. Uh, going forward, you know, we're trying to roll out some improvements to our website, both speaking to Generation 3, speaking to some of the changes in the MIFOS mission, but most importantly, trying to better highlight the products and tools we have available and also to speak more to the case studies of those organizations like we featured today who are building solutions powered by MIFOS as you know we really feel that we have a great opportunity across our community to really you know take advantage of this shift towards open banking so there's a big shift in mentality around utilizing open source and open tools for financial services. And as I said before, you know, we've been at the forefront at it and we want to continue to stay at the forefront at it, of it. And we need you, the members of our community, to help us do that. So I encourage you, if you've innovated or you've been looking to innovate on the OpenStack to share what you've done with the community and tell that story, because it's only by telling that story that we can help show the maturity of our solution and bring on others to, to join us in our mission. So I think Nyan shared his contact details in the chat there. I'll also send along the contact details for Eduardo as well. And once again, thank you for everybody who joined today and we're happy to be a part of Financial Inclusion Week 2017. Take care everyone, bye-bye.